I don't see any real weakness uh, for Hillary in Iowa. I think it's just that, you know, let's face it, we Iowans are kind of pampered, you know. Uh, we're used to uh, people coming to our doors and our homes and things like that. And so uh, and so we kind of, uh, for better or for worse, kind of, kind of maybe expect that. All right. Uh, that's uh, former Senator Tom Harkin. Joining us now is Jonathan Allen, chief political correspondent for Vox.com, a former White House bureau chief for Politico and author of uh, HRC, State Secrets and the Rebirth of Hillary Clinton. Hello, Jonathan. Hey, it's great to be with you. Great to talk to you, sir. All right. So, you know, <laughs> she'll have no problems in Iowa. By the way, there's the book on your television screen, HRC. Um, what do you make of this uh, this tour in this van or whatever, the, whatever they're, Scooby, whatever they're calling it? <laughs> you know, it's ironic. The uh, last time around, she ran as if there were a coronation. And, of course, she had incredible competition uh, from Barack Obama. This time around, there's no competition, and she's insisting on uh, uh, going and walking around, meeting with people, uh, showing up in Iowa, showing the flag, uh, making it seem like she's working hard. Uh, she should have run this campaign last time and the last one this time. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Um, you know, she sat down today with uh, six people. In this, uh, they said she was going to a college. It turned out to be a, a, a sidebar of a college, and and uh, six people. And I, I, I was able to hear the first question or interaction, and she went on and on and on and on and on in her answer, giving her whole history and talking about how CEOs make too much money. And I'm thinking, let's see, three hundred thousand bucks a, a, a speech, uh, the Clinton Foundation, the millions, the whole thing. And and you, how, how does she say it with a straight face? I keep asking everybody. Well, maybe because she's saying that the class of CEOs makes too much money. She may even say she may even believe she makes too much money. Uh, I do think that there's a genuineness issue there. I think it's going to be hard for her to connect with folks uh, while making the problem for her. I guess you know there's there's a path to this that works. Uh, you know, you can see it with the Kennedy family where they you know the sort of idea of noblesse oblige. They've got money and they're uh, obligated to public service because of it. Uh, but in Hillary Clinton's case, she so often tries to make the argument that she's just like everyone else, that I think it comes off as a, a difficult uh, gap for her to, to bridge. Now, talk about the Clinton fatigue. And, and, and you know, the, in your book, you, part of the title is The Rebirth of, of Hillary Clinton. I mean, uh, it, 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 can there be a successful rebirth of Hillary Clinton, especially when she's got so much hanging over her? Because, uh, you know, I, I hope and I, I, I would like to think the email thing isn't going away. Benghazi isn't going away. What difference does it make isn't going away. So, I mean, how does she have a rebirth? I think, uh, you know, the, the title of the book referred to uh, becoming uh, a viable presidential candidate again after having, uh, having lost the 2008 right. yep. primary. So that was the rebirth. Um, is it possible for her to win? Absolutely. Uh, I think that... Uh, some of the things you mentioned will will be a problem for her. I think uh, we're looking at the first time in my memory that you'll have a presidential candidate who is under congressional investigation during the campaign, uh, and I think that will be something difficult for her to contend with. But there's also a risk for Republicans of overplaying it if the public decides that, uh, that, that the folks in Congress are going after things that, uh, that don't add up too much. So uh, we'll see how that plays out, but it's certainly an odd feature of this campaign. And what about Marco Rubio's uh, kickoff yesterday, taking direct shots, I think more at Hillary than at, at any Republican like, Je like Jeb Bush, as some have speculated, uh, by talking about the past, the old ideas, the old leaders. Um, I, I thought that that was a, a brilliant theme and, and uh, you know, it resonated. Um, could she overcome the Clinton fatigue factor? Could she bring up the economy of the 90s when she wants to, but yet you know, look like she's, she's a person of new ideas when she wants to as well? I think it's possible. I think it's. I think it's a. You know. I think that's one of the central challenges for her is going to be uh, how does she present herself as somebody who's full of looking. Uh, in her video, I think uh, you know there was uh, sort of a feel of that. We'll see. We'll see if she's able to sustain it. Uh, you know, I watched the or listened really to the to the Rubio speech uh, yesterday. I thought he was uh, he was compelling. I think he was moving at points. Uh, you make a. You make the right argument that he was going after Hillary Clinton as a generational, uh, as a generation past. Uh, I think also Bush as well. Um, but uh, I actually thought the most impressive part of that was the way he wrapped his personal story into that argument and said uh, his parents yep. uh, 
were born into an area where they would be their future would define be defined by their past, and he personally has broken through that. And so I think that that uh, is a really interesting uh, and, and unique story he has to tell. I couldn't agree more, Jonathan. Great talking to you. I hope you'll come back often, sir. Whenever you want me. Thank All right, you. thank you, Jonathan Allen, ladies and gentlemen. Very interesting. And uh, again, I think Rubio did resonate, and I think he's uh, he's going to be a man to contend with. All right, up next, Deputy Editorial Page Director of the Wall Street Journal, Daniel Henninger. But first, due to popular demand, we're bringing back our viewer call segment. You have to register in advance. Do that by going to callsteve at newsmax.com. Callsteve at newsmax.com.